Why do I criticize others for the very flaws I secretly fear from within myself? This question relates directly to the concept of projection within Jung's theory of the shadow. When we criticize others for flaws that we secretly fear or dislike in ourselves, we are projecting our own unconscious insecurities onto those other people. The shadow, therefore, represents in this moment the part of our psyche that we deny, repress, or feel ashamed of. Traits and emotions we deem unacceptable or unworthy. So, the exploration of existential ideas, particularly Sartre's famous quote, hell is other people, can be interestingly compared with the Jungian concept of the shadow to explain this psychic phenomenon, as both ideas delve into the darker, often hidden aspects of the self and our interactions with others. Sartre, in his play No Exit, famously states, hell is other people. This phrase encapsulates the idea that the presence of others forces us to confront aspects of ourselves that we may find uncomfortable or intolerable. Sartre, an existentialist, argued that much of our distress arises from the way we perceive ourselves through the eyes of others. In the presence of others, we become acutely aware of how they judge and define us often in ways that highlight our own insecurities and weaknesses. Thus, other people become a kind of hell because they mirror back to us those parts of ourselves we wish to deny or escape. Sartre's view emphasizes the idea of the so-called gaze, where being observed by others makes us aware of how we are perceived ourselves often creating a sense of alienation and discomfort. This discomfort arises because the image others have of us may not align with our own self-image, forcing us to confront aspects of ourselves that we would rather ignore. So therefore, the so-called hell that Sartre refers to is this constant and inescapable confrontation with the external judgments that reveal our inner insecurities, flaws, and contradictions. Carl Jung's concept of the shadow parallels very well with Sartre's ideas in interesting ways in this sense. In Jungian psychology, the shadow represents the unconscious parts of our personality that we repress or deny because they are incompatible with our self-concept or societal expectations. These can include, of course, negative traits like anger, greed, or jealousy, but also positive aspects that we have be conditioned to suppress from ourselves. So the shadow is not inherently evil, but it is the part of ourselves that we do not wish to acknowledge, down to or due to trauma and experiences of negativity of some kind that cause us to repress these things, but often because it also conflicts with the persona we present to the world. And this is exactly what Sartre is getting at. The gaze of other people inflicts self-doubt of negative judgment upon ourselves, especially if we are living a lie, if what we are holding up to the face of the world, the persona itself, is an empty persona of inauthenticity that doesn't represent ourselves. Hell is most definitely other people if we never come to know ourselves and lack a strong sense of who we are as individual human beings. So the intersection of Sartre's existentialism and Jung's psychology becomes particularly clear when considering the concept of projection. You know, both philosophies suggest that we often project our shadow, the hidden, the disowned parts of ourselves, onto others. For Sartre, the gaze of the other can be intimidating if we don't know ourselves because we cannot stand firm in our own sense of self in those moments. But this projection also occurs as we see in others the very traits that we find intolerable in ourselves, making hell the reflection of our own disowned qualities. When others judge or define us, it forces us to face these qualities, intensifying our discomfort. In Jungian terms, this projection happens because recognizing our shadow requires us to confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves. Instead of accepting these aspects as part of our own psyche, we attribute 
attribute them to other people, thus avoiding the painful process of self-reflection or to step upon the path of individuation, as he would call it. So for instance, someone who represses their anger may find themselves constantly irritated by others who display anger, without realizing that it is their own unresolved feelings being mirrored back to them in this instance. So from a frame of Sartre's work, that individual who's experiencing that would say, hell is other people because of this projective uh, phenomenon that is occurring. Both Sartre and Jung highlight the unavoidable nature of these confrontations. Sartre suggests that the presence of others is a constant reminder of the aspects of ourselves we cannot stand, while Jung argues that the shadow cannot be eliminated but only integrated. In both cases, growth and self-awareness come from facing these uncomfortable truths. For Sartre, it is about accepting the inescapable nature of the human condition that we are defined in part by how others see us, that this is an inescapable condition we live in, and that this is not something we can fundamentally control, as opinions and preferences, of course, are determined by the other itself. Therefore, for Jung, it is about integrating the shadow into our conscious self and achieving a more complete, authentic personality. We should instead become knowing of our most true beliefs, so that we can embody who we want to become. This way, our confidence in self-knowing overcomes the intimidation itself that Sartre is talking about, which we experience from the gaze of the other. What we can take from this is that Sartre's notion that hell is other people and Jung's concept of the shadow both explore how we can or how we are confronted with the parts of ourselves that we prefer to hide or deny. Sartre focuses on the external gaze of the other as the source of this psychological confrontation, while Jung emphasizes the internal process of projection and integration. Together, these ideas provide a powerful framework for understanding the discomfort and conflict that often arises in our interaction with others, as well as the potential for powerful personal growth that lies in facing our shadows head on. Yet it is Carl Jung's concept of shadow work that offers a practical solution to the insecurity inherent in Sartre's ideas. By addressing the root of our discomfort with others, the parts of ourselves we reject or fit. Such as notions suggest that our interactions with others can trap us in a state of perpetual self-consciousness, where we are constantly judged, leading to feelings of anxiety and alienation. But shadow work, in contrast, encourages us to explore and integrate the unconscious aspects of our personality, which we often project onto others. By confronting these hidden parts of ourselves, we reduce the power they hold over us and diminish our need to seek external validation. This internal process fosters self-acceptance, emotional resilience, transforming our interactions with others from sources of insecurity to opportunities for authentic connection and growth. In this way, Jung's take on shadow work directly counters the existential dread Sartre describes. It overcomes Sartre's problems, offering a path to inner peace and healthier relationships. And this is why I have made the Shadow Work course, which is out now. And in this video, I'm fundamentally basically releasing it right now. So if this is something that you want to do and you want to go on that journey of shadow work that Carl Jung talked about quite a bit in his work, but didn't actually give any practical solutions of how to do it, in this course, I have basically gotten philosophy and psychology, I've merged them together to create exercises and methods for you to use as much as you want to integrate these parts of yourself that you are struggling to work through, through my shadow work course. So if you are someone who is struggling with repeating negative patterns in your life, you want to heal old wounds that are holding you back, whether it's with relationships, your career, or personal habits, if you seek deep relationships, and you are at the moment struggling to figure out how to relate on a deeper level with other people, then this course is also 
for people who are trying to solve that problem. If you feel stuck or blocked in life, you want to confront your inner fears to become the best version of yourself, or you want to simply just embrace the parts of yourself that you have been avoiding, suppressing, or denying, then this course was made exactly for you. So if you are interested in that, you want to read the full description, the full analysis, and the full outline of what this course includes and what you get with it which is a workbook. You get a one-on-one network support community with me. When you get this course, you get a video library of over one hour's worth of lessons on how to use the workbook I've made for you guys. And of course, over 10 worksheets and exercises for you to use. Then if you want to check that out, you can find the link in the description right on this video both in the comment section and in the description. So check that out. I very much look forward to releasing this and seeing how much you guys like it and how much you enjoy the course and hearing your transformations in the process of using the course. So with that said, thank you for watching this video, guys. Check out that course down below and I will speak to you in the next video. Thanks for watching.